Perfect. Well, thanks for joining everybody. Um, and welcome to today's episode of Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. My name is Sarah Provado, and I'm going to be your host for today. And for those of you who might be joining for the first time, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants is all about bringing science, adventure, and conservation to classrooms across North America and the world. And today we have the Toucan Rescue Ranch joining us all the way from Costa Rica. They are focused on care, rehabilitation, and release of national wildlife since 2004. And the Toucan Rescue Ranch provides sanctuary while also giving treatment, rehabilitation, and when possible, release to their natural environment. Um, right now they're specializing in toucan, sloths, and owls. And however, they also have a large array, array of wildlife from weasels, porcupines, cats, King of Jews, Peru, <laughs> parrots, and so forth. Uh, and I'm going to bring in Isaac right now, and maybe he can tell me how to actually pronounce King of Jews, because <laughs> that was my first time saying that. I mean, good pronunciation, yeah. <laughs> yeah thank right, you. Yeah. King of Jews, not Pikachu, very common mistake. It happens a lot, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, close, Perfect. guys. <laughs> I'll let you take it away, and I'll get out of the way here. All right. Thank you so much for that introduction, Sarah. Uh, so yeah, my name, my name is Isaac. I'm one of the full-time guides working here at the Tucan Rescue Ranch. I've been working here for over two years. Um, and yeah, I've been getting the chance to learn a lot of really cool things about the animals that we have that I would like to let you know today. And well, um, yeah, here in the Tucan Rescue Ranch, as Zara was saying, we specialize in rescue, rehabilitating, and rewilding animals, lots of different kinds of animals. Uh, so we have slots, we have toucans, owls, also some parrots, macaws. So yeah, actually I was going to ask you, Zara, um, like the focus of today's tours, what would you like it to be? Because yeah, I can show you birds or slots or whatever you want. So yeah. The sloths are always a favorite, but why don't we do a little bit of sloths and, and the toucans as well? All right, awesome. So yeah, um, a little bit. I think I'm not going to be able to do a lot of, of slots because I think most of them are sleeping right now. Um, but yeah, we will have the chance to see them. So yeah, just give me one sec to switch the camera. All right, let me see. There it is. All right. Now, as I was saying, yeah, most of them are sleeping right now which makes sense because sloths are, these species, tuto sloths, are nocturnal animals, all right? So yeah, these animals uh, will sleep during the day and will be more active during the night. Although, contrary to what most people believe, sloths are not uh, really sleepy animals. They are not lazy. They actually are not slow. Unfortunately, there are, there are lots of misconceptions out there about sloths. And yeah, my goal today is to let you know which ones are true and which ones are false. So yeah, starting with their speed. Slots are not slow. Um, they actually can be really aggressive animals. When we are working with them, we need to be very careful. Because yeah, we try to, to help them, but they don't know that. They don't know that we are trying to help them. They will think that actually we are like some sort of ugly predator for them. Um, so yeah, these animals can defend themselves and be really, really quick. So that's Landon. He was he's sleeping in that bucket. Well, the hammock, sorry. A sloth that is sleeping in a bucket will be this one here. That's uh, Latte. So I'll try to show you Latte a bit closer. Just one sec. Oh, well, Georgie is here. And Latte, yeah. There it is. So that's uh, Georgie. He's actually the biggest sloth that we have here in the sanctuary and the most aggressive. So I'm not going to approach a lot. <laughs> uh, I'll keep my distance from him because, yeah, I don't want to mess with Georgie. And well, guys, um, as I was saying, sloths will move slow sometimes uh, because of two different reasons. One thing to keep in mind is this animal's diet. Slots eat mostly leaves. So we have um, kinds of food that will give us a lot of energy. For example, there are fruits very rich in, in sugar, in calories, in energy. Uh, chocolate, right? We eat chocolate and we go like crazy, start running 
all over the place and we have a lot of energy, right? Um, but the sloths, they eat leaves. Leaves are the opposite of chocolate and fruits. They, they don't have a lot of uh, sugar or energy. So that's why these animals uh, move slow sometimes because they need to save the few energy that they get uh, to use it when it's really needed. For example, when they feel threatened by a predator. And yeah, the other reason, the second reason why sloths sometimes will move slow, it's because there is no rush. I insist, if these animals, if they don't need to move fast, they are not going to move fast. Um, but if they need to move fast, as I was saying, if they feel threatened by a predator, they can be really, really fast animals. And well, as I was saying before, they're not that sleepy. They sleep usually between eight to 10 hours per day. Like many people on the weekends, I think we're not allowed to judge these animals. Um, however, in captivity, I gotta be honest, these animals will sleep more. Uh, when they're like in a zoo or in a sanctuary or some place like this, yeah, they will move slow because, well, there are not too many things to do when you are uh, in these enclosures. Um, of course, we give them enrichment, like activities for them to, to do. We need to keep them amused and happy, right? Um, and yeah, we do this with every animal that we have here. And well, um, I insist, guys, these animals, I know, I know I am aware that they don't look like dangerous, but they really are. I don't know if you have seen uh, their claws. These animals have some huge claws uh, that they will use to defend themselves. And also their teeth. They have some really, really large teeth. Actually, if you give me a sec, I'm going to move to the rescue center where we have uh, baby slots. Hopefully, uh, they will be more active <laughs> than the adults. Uh, but yeah, guys, as I was saying, these slots uh, will, will bite. They, they have ever-growing teeth. So this means that their teeth never stop growing. And they wear down their teeth every time that they're like eating or open and close their mouth for some reason, which means that they're constantly sharpening their teeth. And that's why a sloth bite is so nasty. But look at this little cutie that is over here. Thankfully, this little one, it's awake and a little bit active, not like the adults. So we have a program where we rescue, re raise, rehabilitate, and rewild baby slots, orphan baby slots. And now this program is divided in different stages. So uh, the first stage will be preschool, Second one, elementary school, then middle school, high school, and finally college. So yeah, guys, education is important also for slots. We need to teach them lots of different things. We need to teach them how to climb, how to eat, even how to go to the bathroom. And yeah, um, when they're little babies, we need to teach them everything. But as they grow, as they continue, continue through the program, they start becoming even more independent each time. And well, um, in each stage, we will give like a different focus. When there are uh, little, little babies, newborns, um, the focus is just on growing and drinking their milk. We need them to be strong uh, to continue through the program to gain some weight. And yeah, later they will learn how to climb like on around middle school, also they learn uh, to eat more solid food, not a lot of milk, but more leaves and some other things that we will give them occasionally. Um, and then when they're like in high school, they spend most of the day outside. So if it rains, they will get wet. If it's a very sunny and hot day, they will also have to experience that because that's how it will be in the wild. So we need them to get used to the environmental conditions that we have in Costa Rica. And finally, when they're in college, we take them to our release site. So the release site, it's another property that we have 
And the team that we have there, it's more focused on the rewilding part. And they keep track of several animals like slugs. So yeah, when they're in college, we do what we call a soft release. So we basically release the slots near the facilities of the release, just to keep an eye on them, to see how they're doing. If they're doing pretty well, awesome. We take them and we lose them really deep in a forest at some national park. And yeah, that's like the definite release. It's a very successful program. It has a success rate of 90%. So, it's that, so that's something that we're really proud of. And well, as I was saying, there are several myths, uh, misconceptions about slots, but there are some other things that people say that are true. For example, the slots will defecate, will go to the bathroom on the ground, which is pretty odd. You know, they live up in trees where they are uh, far away from predators, where they have an easy access on leaves, which, as I've been saying, they eat. But still, they go all the way down to the ground to to use the bathroom, and that's pretty weird. Uh, makes no sense actually, and that's one of the many mysteries surrounding slots. We don't know why they do this. There are several hypotheses. However, none has been a hundred percent prove it yet. And yeah, even though we specialize with these animals, we still need to learn a lot about them. Also, they are famous um, because in the wild, they look a bit green. You can see that this one, it's brown, but in the wild, they look a bit green. So this one, it's like brown because that's how slots are, and this is a baby. However, when they're in the wild and when they're adults, they look green because there are algae and uh, different things like kind of like moss that will grow in their fur. And actually, I call these animals a walking ecosystem. They will provide shelter to lots of different organisms. Not only algae will be found in their fur, but you will also see moths, uh, mites, beetles dueling in these animals' fur. Actually, there's a species of moth that can be found exclusively in sloth fur and nowhere else in the world. So that's the sloth moth. <laughs> and well, um, here's one of the babies that we have, but there in the bucket we have a second one. And let me try to show you some of the other babies. So as I was saying, all of these babies are orphans. That's either because their mother died or abandoned them. And yeah, um, we keep them together when they're little babies. We've noticed that it actually uh, helps them to grow when they're like in pairs. However, to be honest, that's not something that you'll see very often in the wild. Um, normally, the females, mom sloth, will have just one baby each time. And yeah, these are the teeny tiny babies that belong to the preschool elementary school. But now I'm going to try to show you if they're out here. I don't think so now that I think about it. So yeah, here we have these three, that it's where we have the ones that are like in middle school, high school. Here, uh, these assaults learn to climb, but still they're very young. And it just really, uh, it recently rained here. So I think we took them back for some shelter. But yeah, let me see if we have the other babies that are on rehabilitation over here. All right. <laughs> I think, okay, I just saw one grow up in a bowl, sleeping in the bucket here. So yeah, this belifer um, is a flaw. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I was saying, these animals will defend themselves when they feel threatened. So yeah, it's not easy to hunt a sloth. And also they don't really work. Sloths are mostly fur. They're not 
are very muscular animals. They don't give a lot of uh, calories or meat. So that's why um, other predators like jaguars uh, or pumas, which are like the top predators that we have in the country, they will look for other prey instead of sloths. Right? <laughs> now, there are two different kinds of sloths. We have the three-toed sloth and the two-toed sloth. Now, if you look at their feet, you will count three toes in the case of both species. Both species of sloths will have three toes on their feet. The difference is on their forelimbs, on their hands. So yeah, that's why I rather to call them two finger sloth or three fingers sloth instead of two toed or three toed. All right. And yeah, these are completely different animals. Um, we don't receive a lot of three toads because, well, they get in trouble less often than these ones. <laughs> they avoid like uh, people, not as much as the two toads. So that's why we receive more often two toads. And yeah, uh, I think yesterday we received um, baby three toad, but it's like a newborn, it's tiny, so it's in the special care area. And yeah, I don't have access over there because I don't want also to bother the, the babies. <laughs> and yeah, two toe slots and three toe slots are completely different animals. I've been showing you just two toe slots. And you can see that they have like a very lovely piggy nose. Um, three toes slots, they have a smaller and black nose. And also, three toe slots, they have a black mask, like a raccoon, while this one's lack of it. Okay. So, yeah, just one sec to go over the sanctuary side. So, yeah, guys, as I was explaining, we rehabilitate animals, but those animals stay in the rescue center, uh, that it's like a restricted part uh, for the public. We also work with um, on-site tours, uh, educational walks here in Costa Rica. But the animals that we show in those walks are permanent residents. So they have to stay here because um, they wouldn't be successful in the wild. And yep, they're still sleeping over there. We have big Georgie. I'm gonna try to show you Georgie again. There he is. <laughs> and while I was telling you about that, um, the lovely piggy nose that they have. So um, these animals have a really, really good sense of smell. That's why the nose. Uh, not like their eyesight. Their eyesight, it's terrible. They have what it's called monochromatic vision. This means that they just see in black and white which makes sense because they are nocturnal. They live in, they're more active during the night when you don't see a lot of things, right? There's no light. But yeah, the other of smell, it's amazing. We have rewilded completely blind slots and they did it uh, just fine with their sense of smell. Alrighty guys. So yeah, I think slots are not, being very active, which is okay. Here, um, we show the animals that just want to be seen. We need to provide a place for the animals to hide if they want to. It's one of the ethical things that we need to keep in mind. And yeah, I don't know if we should leave questions for the end or if you want me to continue with questions now and then with another animal. I don't know. Uh, sorry, I think you're muted right now. Ah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we get a few sloth questions in now, and then we can jump to the birds and, and get a few more questions in there. Okay, for sure. Um, I'll go right to the chat. And uh, we have Jordan asking, how long do the claws grow? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, now, the thing with their claws is that the internal part, it's an extension of their bone. 
so it reaches a point. Um, and the external part of the claw, it's keratin, just like our fingernails, which keeps growing continuously, but they kind of like wear down their claws every time that they are climbing, because yeah, they will use their claws a lot. Um, but yeah, to give you an idea, like around six centimeters, I'm not sure how much will that be in inches, <laughs> um, but yeah. All yeah. right, we're gonna bring in a classroom here then. Miss Callan's class, are you all ready for a question there? Okay, great. I'm gonna put you guys up. Okay. Hi. Um, how many sloths have you rescued? How did the sloths what? Sorry? Okay, really close up here. How many sloths have you rescued? Okay. Thank you for your question. Yep. Ooh, that's a good one. Um We've been working with sloths since 2007. So yeah, um, it's been over 10 years rescuing sloths. We have rescued around maybe 150 to 100 individuals since we started, I will say, hopefully. But yeah, yeah to give you an idea, but I don't know, we have received so many. <laughs> Okay, we have another question in coming from Miss T's grade threes. I'm gonna put you guys up. I see somebody up and ready with their question. Go ahead. How do you know if it's a she or he? Okay. Um, yeah, great question as well. It's very hard to tell actually. We will look we will have to look at their private parts, which is not something that they really enjoy, and still it's very, very, very difficult. Um it's easier in the case of the three toe slots because males they have like a black stripe on their backs and less fur in that part or shorter fur let's say um females lack of it so that's a way to tell them apart but in the case of two toe slots um it's not that easy it's more difficult yeah all right all right we're gonna jump to another grade three class at Levico west i see somebody up in center there so i'm gonna bring you all in how many years does it take for them to reach college, the slots? Okay. Um, not as many years as us, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, slots, like if they continue through the program um, like a normal and good rate, let's say, um, around year and a half, two years. That's what takes them to reach college, yeah and they get rewilded around two years and a half, but yeah. Definitely not as long as us. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna jump to Miss Force's class. I see that there's somebody ready for a question here. Yeah, um, Jane wants to know how slow is their reaction time, the sloths? Oh, not at all slow. No. Um, no. As I've been saying, there's a really, really wrong idea about slots. Uh, no, they are really quick. Uh, when they feel threatened, um, and they detect that really quick as well, uh, they will they will attack with their claws, with uh, their their teeth. They will try to bite. Uh, no, even humans will need to have really good reflexes to avoid a sloth attack. I know, guys, that it's hard to picture a sloth being fast, but they really uh, can be fast. Um, and yeah, they will detect it really quick because their best sense is their sense of smell. And um, yeah, they will smell predators from the distance. Okay, we're gonna jump to Miss Siemens class and Miss Barbito's class. I see you all have a question there. So I'll give you both a chance. Sophia, Sophia, come here. I'm standing by me. Ah! Okay, turn around. Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. Do they live with their mom the whole time or do they move to another group? Do they start another group? What do they do? All right. So yeah, they are solitary animals. They will live alone. Uh, and well, babies will stay with the mom for around a year to year and a half 
until she abandons the baby. And that's how they learn to live alone. So yeah, uh, you're not going to see them in groups. They are solitary animals and also territorial, especially males. They don't want to be near each other. All right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have one last question from uh, Miss Green's class, and then we're going to, we can go to um, another species and then get okay. some more questions in later. Perfect, Miss Green, I see somebody is uh, oh up in center here. Okay. How long do they live for? How long do they live for? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Thank you so much. I have no idea. <laughs> so um, if you look the answer in internet, if you look the theory and the books, which are very old, by the way, you'll see that slots live between 25 to 30 years. That's what, that's what most people say. I don't buy it. Uh, sloths are understudied animals. Years ago, people used to believe that they are boring. So no one did research on them until recent years. So that's why I don't believe that someone has followed an entire sloth life. But also, the oldest living sloth lives in a zoo in Germany and it's 53, 53 years old. Yeah. So yeah, 25 to 30 years, I don't really think so. And yeah, this is something that will require further research. 53 that's well past yeah college stage a lot <laughs> <laughs> awesome well thanks for your questions on sloths and i guess we can move on to the next one and um we have around 10 more 15 more minutes left in this in this hangout here all right Sam, yeah, now i'm going to continue i'm going to look for some of the animals that started this place toucans so yeah we are named the toucan rescue ranch because the first animals but two thousand uh three two thousand four we're protecting we're working with um macaws with pirates but no one was like really paying attention to toucans uh they were like they were like left behind and the founder of this place, Leslie Howell, she saw the need to help these animals. And of course, they are one of our spoiled animals. Now I'm going to start with this one that I hope will stay there where she is. I'm going to approach carefully because I don't want to scare her away. This is Amber. Amber is kind of shy, so I'm actually surprised that she's here in the front. Yeah, she would just eat a banana. <laughs> and yeah, she's a very beautiful toucan that we have. She's a fiery built aracari. So yeah, these kind of toucans are called aracaris, um, but they're still from the toucan's family. There she is. <laughs> and yeah, still from the toucan's family, but they are a bit different than other normal toucans, let's say, um, because they're smaller, their coloration it's different as well and well she just went back at the bottom of the enclosure that's okay as i was saying before animals here um will do whatever they want to do and here we have more aracaris but this is a different species the colored aracari okay one sec all right amber came back there she is <laughs> So yeah, um, another difference that they have um, that distinguishes them from other toucans will be a horizontal pupil, like the eye of a goat. The pupils are horizontal, which increases their peripheral vision, so they can see even more uh, on their sides, which is really good because you know they have a really large peak in front of their faces. <laughs> And yeah, fire built Arakari, this video over here, but let me show you some different toucans, like Zuri, who's here. She's a chestnut built toucan. Now Zuri is here because she was someone's pet and she was in terrible conditions. And that's why she feels so comfortable around me. As you can see, she's not as shy as um, Amber. That's because she used to be a, a pet. But still, 
even though she was a pet and even though she's used to people, she tends to behave aggressive. So I, I love Zuri because she's a great example that used to people or imprinted doesn't mean friendly. Okay. So um, toucans, I will say, are very famous um, because they have that really, really large beak. So they have that beak for a reason. Well, several reasons, actually. Their beaks are essentially are tools which um, that helps them to do lots of different things. Uh, for example, their beaks will help them to reach food that will be unreachable for some species of birds. Uh, will help them to defend themselves, to eat a large variety of different things. But definitely, the main purpose of their beak and the main reason why they have such a large beak is because it helps them to cool down. So yeah, uh, humans, we can sweat, and that's what we use to cool down. Tukans can't sweat. They simply can't. So they develop a very large beak, and uh, there's a flow of blood inside their beak. When they get over here, they increase the flow of blood to their beaks. And that helps them get to release heat to the area. It works similar as a radiator from a car. <laughs> and yeah, extremely useful adaptation when you live in the hot and wet tropical rainforest. Now, something else that you can notice in their beaks will be that they are serrated. So yeah, these animals have like little serrations in their beaks, which allows them um to tear apart uh some fruits and also uh meat because yeah chickens are pretty cute but they are um not really nice birds let's say <laughs> these animals will eat other animals such as uh insects amphibians and reptiles and smaller birds and smaller mammals eggs hatchlings almost everything that fits in their beak um, but also fruits. Actually, they do have a preference for fruits, but also will need uh, an animal protein source, such as, um, yeah, fox. But if they have the chance, bigger animals. Yeah, um, I've seen pictures of this species eating rats. And once I saw a video of a toucan eating a squirrel, which, which was, yeah, uh, pretty surprising. And well, I just showed you. Um, the chestnut bill token. We have one more species that I would like to show you really quick, which is the rainbow bill. So let me see if they're over here. Okay, one sec. There he is. Very tiny token back there. He's not that tiny. The thing is that he is far away. But maybe, yeah, we can see Annabelle who is here. Yeah, they're not a, uh, very close. Yeah, that's that. These animals are very beautiful, so that's why I always like to, to show them. The, as I was saying, the name is Rainbow Build Toucan, and that's because they have very colorful beaks. All right. Thanks for giving us a bit of a tour, Isaac. Um, there's a few questions in if you're ready for those. For sure. Perfect. All right, we have Mr. John's class, his life skills class. Oop, wrong question here. Um, they want to know how many kinds or species of toucans live in Costa Rica. Okay. In Costa Rica, we have six different species of toucans. Uh, and in the continent, in the Americas, there are around 30. So how many, it's like on discussion. But yeah, there are several species for sure. Okay. All right, we're going to jump to um, Abaco West grade three class. I see somebody right in, uh, right in front and center there. So I'm going to bring you in. Uh, what do two cans eat? All right. So yeah, they will eat a variety of fruits and also some smaller animals like some bugs or maybe even uh, smaller birds. Yeah, they will eat a lot of different things actually. Okay. Ajmal wants to know, how far can Toucan see? Ooh, that's a, a good one. Um, so they have really good eyesight. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they can see like very far, like a raptor. 
um, yeah, these animals, they don't need that adaptation. However, they can see a wide variety of colors. They can see even more colors than humans. So yeah, good eyesight, but not focus on seeing uh, from far away. Right? Okay, we're gonna go over to Mrs. Callum's class and we'll get a question from you all there. Um, what are their prey and predators? Okay. So their prey will be um, animals that live near the area. As I was saying, some birds, because yeah, they live up high on trees, just like other birds. Um, some animals, mammals like squirrels, some bugs. Those are some prey. And predators, they don't really have too many. Uh, toucans are well respected in the wild. Uh, they're actually the tough ones in their habitats. However, they might get attacked by some forest hawks, some forest falcons as well. Um, but yeah, there are not too many. Other birds, like bigger birds, will be the main predator. OK, we're going to jump to Mrs. Siemens' class. We're coming up on time, so this will be our last question for today. Uh, I'll bring you guys up front. Are they born with feathers? Did you hear him? Sorry, could you repeat the question one more time? Are they born with feathers? When they're born, do they have feathers? Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, no, uh, I gotta be honest here. I love toucans, but when there are new uh, newborns, when they hatch from the egg, they're ugly. Yeah, they are featherless, blind, and they just look like uh, tiny, creepy dinosaurs. <laughs> um, yeah, not very cute, but they, they will get cuter. No worries. Perfect. I'm going to squeeze in one more. Um, Maiden asks, is there a reason their beaks are so colorful? Okay, great question. So um, one reason that we believe it's uh, called interspecific differentiation. Okay, so we have very similar toucans, but they are different um, because they have different beak coloration. So that's a way to... Um, so they can tell them apart like themselves you know they will see another token that it's similar but they are like okay no this one has a different big coloration so it's not my same species i don't have nothing to do with this token um so yeah that's one reason why they have like different colorations but as i was saying before they can see more colors than humans so i always say there must be something hiding over there going on that they can see and we can't And yeah. Okay. Amazing. Absolutely fascinating. I definitely learned something today. And I'm sure a lot of other people here did too. Thank you for all of your questions and thanks for joining in. We're coming up on time, so I'm gonna have to let everybody go. Um, Isaac, thank you so much for your time today as well. It was great to get a tour of everything that you have going on over there. Oh, it was my Perfect timing. <laughs> I know he's kind of far out, so it must have just dropped. Um, but thanks for joining everyone today, and uh, we'll see you again for the next Hangout. Bye. <laughs>